Hello, I'm Lee Kreider, the producer of The Ohio Ram Show, and this is show number 205. I am Maria Vasquez. I am the host of The Ohio Ram Show, a show about cycling and ultra cycling. This is a service of the Race Across America Time Stations 41 in Oxford, 42 in Lanchester, and 43 in Chili Coffee. Just a brief announcement, the Race Across America Crew Seminars will be coming up here very shortly. And if you're going to be in the Race Across America or the Race Across the West in 2019, it's of course important for you to have someone from your crew present at one of these seminars. But if you're going to be in the, these races in 2020, it's also important because there's actually things you'll learn in these 2019 seminars that you should be doing before the 2020 seminars come around. We have been to a number of these seminars and every time we go, we learn something new. On January 19th, there'll be a seminar in Dublin, Ohio. The Ohio Ram Show crew will be there to talk to the participants and interview some of you. We always look forward to that. Then on the 9th of February, there'll be a crew seminar in Sacramento, California. And on February the 23rd, the third seminar will be held in London, England. So uh, be sure to sign up for one of these seminars. Be sure and check the show notes. They'll be right below the video if you're watching the show on OhioRamShow.com website. If you are watching the show on YouTube in the description box, you will find a link to the show notes. There'll be information there on today's guests, as well as some other links of importance. The World Time Trials offered a real exciting race this year in many ways, but I think many people were quite excited about the 24-hour women's race. And we're going to go over to Maria, who's going to talk to a couple of people who made a lot of news in that race. Go ahead, Maria. We have today, all the way from California, Jen Orr. Jen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, so I'm going to go straight to business. Um, tell us a little bit about Borrego Springs and the Time Trial Championship. Um, Borrego Springs uh, went obviously great for me. It was my second year doing it, and my goal was just to improve on uh, my result the first year when I didn't train too much for it. And obviously I did uh, exceed that goal and just in the few days before the race, it occurred to me that I could probably break the course record. Worked with a coach, and we had kind of a race plan, and I just went out and executed that plan, and that's how it all worked out. And it just everything fell together perfectly. Yep, I, I heard. So can you give us a little bit more details in terms of the, you know, the mileage, how well you did? Course record set by Shauna Hogan, I think in 2016, was um, 433.2 miles. I went in just hoping to break 400 miles. I uh, ended up doing 456 miles. Were there any pressure behind you? Was there something going on there that kept you going? So as far as I knew, Shauna was in second place behind me. And um, at some point, I think around 2 o'clock, a few hours before the, the finish, I, I lapped Shauna. And as far as I knew, she was in second place behind me. But then within a few minutes... Um, I got a text from my coach telling me that I've got someone like gaining on me and didn't get a name. <laughs> and, um, you know, by the time I got through with that lap, uh, you know, was, I think it was about an 11 minute gap. And, um, wow. and then, just, you know, throughout the rest of the race, it was like this person had just come out of, and the, the way they described it is came out of nowhere. They weren't even paying attention to her. And all of a sudden, like, wait, we got to start paying attention to this one. <laughs> just every lap I was getting updates and she just kept getting faster and faster. And uh, until that, that last lap, I think it was like three minutes. And I was just having to expend every bit of energy I had left um, to get to the, the finish and hold her off. I kept looking behind me. Um, <laughs> like, I didn't know what she looked like. And I'm like looking behind me to see if there's someone I don't recognize coming up from behind me. 
um, and you know, finally turned the last corner and uh, didn't see anybody. And I figured, okay, I've got it, but I still have to keep sprinting. And um, you know, it wasn't until I think I finally pulled in, and they were all telling me, okay, you did it, you, you did it, you held her off. <laughs> and, um, I still, I don't even think I knew her name until uh, like the award ceremony. But yeah, it was uh, Megan hacking in. Yeah, and guess who do we have here in the show today? <laughs> we have Megan. So welcome, Megan. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm pretty stoked to be here. Um, I don't know who had the most pressure, if Jen because she was being followed or you because you wanted to catch her. So can somebody share anything about that? So I was racing kind of in a void. Um, it was my first um, endurance race. My parents were crewing for me and they gave me literally like no information about where anyone was at. So I was just out there riding my bike and uh, it wasn't until the last hour of the race that another crew member came up to me and he was like, the lead woman is 10 minutes ahead of you. Go, go. And I was like, what? This is crazy. And so I just, um, like Jen, I hammered for the last hour. But my parents didn't feel like letting me know that I was the second female had any um, any bearing on my performance for some reason. So I just got out there and rode my bike. Okay, I, I have to go back because this is very interesting. I mean, over 400 miles, both of you, and Lee she said she was out there riding her bike. Yeah, um, I've been cycle touring for about nine years now. Um, my first bike trip was down the Pacific coast from um, Terrace, British Columbia in Northern BC, um, through Haida Gwaii, Vancouver Island, the Pacific coast and into Mexico. Um, I cycled across Canada. I cycled across the US as part of the Trans Am bike race. This summer I put on over 10,000 kilometers cycling in Europe from the Arctic circle to Tarifa, Spain. So cycling in Spain was really good heat training for me for Borrego. It was just another bike ride, um, except it was to be done in 24 hours. That was my first time with support as well. So it was very, very different. Jen, did you know anything? Like, did your, was your crew able to give you all that information as you were going or not? Come on, you need to tell me what's going on. I need to know how much time I have. And so there were points where I thought, okay, they haven't said anything. I must be fine. And I think at one point my coach had told me, I don't think she's going to catch you. There's no way she can catch you. And then obviously within the last the last couple of laps, she's getting closer and closer. And now they're telling me, you know, just frantically telling me I need to push and, uh, you know, and, and getting those updates. It was uh, it was pretty intense the last half hour to an hour when we switched to those shorter lap, laps. Oh. Jen, you mentioned a uh, race across the West. My ultimate goal is to do Ram in 2020. And this all started mm -hmm. a year ago when I um, went into Brava Springs, just kind of on a whim and then ended up qualifying for Ram and didn't really have much intention to do it at the time. But then uh, my local friends uh, thought it was so cool that I had qualified and just kept encouraging me, encouraging me to go for it. I had to requalify by um, through 2020. So that's why I went back to Brago Springs this year. I thought for myself, it would probably be wise to start a little smaller with a uh, race across the West next year. Um, I'm also now signed up for Hoodoo 500 in August. I think I've got the bulk of a crew together for ra race across the West. Megan, any plans for you? Race across the West, race across America, maybe? Um, Ram intrigues me that, uh, that's something that I would be interested in for sure. This summer, I'm going to crew for, um, a team from Ram that I guess my, my coach is crew chief for them. So I'm really excited to get that experience going to Hawaii for Christmas. I'm going to climb up Haleakala. It's like 10,000 yeah. feet. So that's going to be awesome. Oh, my background is in roller derby which is a sport dominated by women where there's just like fierce athletic women kicking the crap out of each other and it is so entertaining like if people are like oh women's sports they're not nearly as fun to watch as men I always tell them to go and watch a roller derby game because it exemplifies how tough and badass and entertaining women are like it's such a spectator sport and I definitely thought about that at the end when I was chasing Jen down when I finally found out that I was in second place I was like <laughs> I am on her. Like, I don't care if I catch her, but I owe it to the sport to chase this woman down and give her a run for her money. Uh, and if it was roller derby, I would chase her. Oh. But because this is a non-contact sport, I keep my hands to myself. She was and ready to tackle her, so. you. 
Megan, I don't think it would work if you would bump her down like you do in roller derby. <laughs> I think we should mention that Jen and I both finished in the top 10 overall. Like the fact yeah. that we oh finished in course. top 10, okay. including men, when number one is Strauss and number two is Balo, right. like the fact that she was, were you sixth or fifth? Sixth like place, sixth. Yeah. Like that's like pretty, pretty rad. Like I think that yeah. we wow. both should pat ourselves on the back for that. All right. Thank you, Jen, for joining us today. Thank you, Megan, for joining us. Thank you, Megan and Jen, for being on the show. Perhaps we just interviewed the first 500-mile, 24-hour woman. I'm sure she's out there, and we're looking forward to hearing about her in the not-too-far-distant future. And thank you again, Maria, for hosting the show. Our next show will be on December the 17th, and we're going to show you something of the crew seminars that happened last year in 2018. And we are looking forward to meeting a good many friends again next year. Goodbye, Maria. Goodbye, Lee. Goodbye, everyone. See you in about 10 days. Music by Kevin McLeod. Uh.